Schiller sagte, was macht man, wenn der Staat korrupt ist und die Masse erschlafft? Woher soll dann die Veränderung kommen? Und dann hat Schiller ja diese wirklich fantastische Antwort gefunden, dass es nämlich nur durch die klassische Kunst passieren kann. Im Grunde ist gerade die Beschäftigung mit der klassischen Kunst das, was den Menschen innerlich frei macht, weil wenn man die Kreativität der Komponisten, der Dichter, der Dramatiker studiert, dann repliziert man das oder man kann es lernen, das zu replizieren und damit wird genau dieser freie Bürger möglich, der in der französischen Revolution eben offensichtlich nicht vorhanden war. Und deshalb denke ich, dass die Kombination von beidem, also vor allen Dingen halt auch die Beschäftigung mit der klassischen Kunst, ein ganz wichtiger Schritt ist für die Antwort auf diese Frage. possibility to sing all your life and your voice never gets old I met I met people that are like 85 90 years old and they and they when you talk to them on the phone or so I mean they sound like they're 20 years old still and the young just gets the voice gets younger and younger Ruff. call music is is based on two things on the human singing voice what the human singing voice can be and then at the same time it's on the basis of being able to express the kinds of ideas which no animal is capable of expressing which is human creativity mankind is the only species that can change its own behavior in a creative way And what is beautiful and good for mankind is to be human, that is to be creative, rather than doing the same old thing all the time. Naturally, music is a reproduction of the human voice. And all these voices in Bach just gel completely together. And when Beethoven was reaching the height of his emotions, and he couldn't go any further in composition, he would write a fugue because the few would be the epitome of all these emotions. What we have to do is develop the capacity for people to think in nonlinear ways. And this is what counterpoint is. When you start adding voices, when you have two or three or four or five or six voices that create an increased capability for turbulence or change or a singularity, whether it's a, a, the use of a Lydian interval in a cross voice in a, a, a canon, or something of that sort, where the mind has to go beyond just following one line. And the best example of this, of course, is the uh, Bach, 
And if you want to use Bach, you would take things like the Preludes and Fugues. So that is the best example of a creative artist who has developed an idea of well-tempering, which is designed to enable people to be creative. And if you look at the way that competent people perform the Bach uh, Preludes and Fugues, you get a sense of what creativity is. This necessity of putting yourself through uh, this demanding, most demanding of counterpoint, which is the fugue, uh, is, is essential for the development of any musician. The composer is uh, even more so. Mozart was always a genius, and he had the two phases. You have his before he went into the uh, salon on Sundays, and afterward. He had a revolution going into uh, von Sweeten's salons, as, as Haydn had. Haydn, of course, had composed his set of quartets based on von Sweeten's influence. Um, um, Mozart came into the picture and me did the same thing and then did his, uh, did his quartets in answer to Haydn, dedicated to Haydn, because Haydn had brought him into an understanding this higher thing. <laughs> Das liegt mir sehr am Herzen. Ich habe das schon lange, trage ich das in mir herum. Und äh, ich hat, äh, es hatte eigentlich nie richtigen Anklang gefunden. Und da, die einzige Person, die das sofort verstanden hat, war Lyndon LaRouche. He demonstrated something which I had as a concept, not as an expression. Now it's one thing hearing something and you hear a concept in what you're hearing. And then to understand how to create that expression, how to create it in your own mind, how to generate it in your own mind, is a different thing. So a great performer who has a sense of motif for him, as he did, and I knew that from various, various ways, actually opens up by performing for you something that communicates that idea. You now know it. Die heutigen Forscher, die Mozart- und Haydn-Forscher, die verstehen das überhaupt nicht. Sie wissen, dass es existiert und haben, haben das auch, auch geschrieben. Aber weiter beschäftigen sie sich damit überhaupt nicht. It's a horrible thing to see when professional musicians start seeing what they're doing as a job, as opposed to part of a mission, to bring these beautiful ideas to people. Why are you doing this profession? The responsibility that you have towards music the moment you're, you're, you're undertaking this, it has to be a matter of life or death to do this profession. Gerade weil der Künstler wie kein anderer die Fähigkeit hat, das Publikum zu rühren. Dass er diese Fähigkeit nicht einfach so einsetzen darf, aus, aus ja, niedrigen Gründen, sondern er soll, bevor er es wagt, sein Publikum zu rühren, müsste er sich selbst erst zum idealen Menschen veredelt haben. Das ist ja eine sehr eine große Herausforderung. Das heißt, der Künstler kann nicht einfach so 
aus dem Tagesgeschäft gehen und Platsch die, in, das, vor das Publikum treten, sondern er soll sich seiner Aufgabe bewusst sein und den, die, das Publikum, die Menschen veredeln. Das hat der Schiller hundertmal gesagt, äh, dass er seine ganze Kunst nur deshalb geschrieben hat, äh, um die Menschen zu veredeln. Und ich glaube, dass, dass wir nicht nur um die Aufführung von klassischen Werken kämpfen müssen, sondern eben auch, dass der Künstler hinter das Werk zurücktritt und das Kunstwerk so präsentiert, wie es intendiert war. Und dann hat es den Effekt. And I looked up and the maestro had a tear in, rolling down his cheek and he said, aren't we fortunate to be musicians? I've never forgotten that moment because he outlined for us the, the, the profession that we were in is a profession of calling and a profession of art and a profession that when you're in, uh, uh, you are closest to God I believe when you are performing because you are a vehicle for that wonderful thing that we're getting from on high that comes through us and, and, and makes us a bigger person and makes us the vehicle to transport that to other people. We human beings, we think we have five senses. We actually have more. Uh, if we are intelligent enough, we learn what some of these make, kinds of uh, uh, communication are. Most people are not aware of them, uh, consciously. They may be affected by them, but they're not really aware of them. They are affected by something which to them, consciously, appears to be only chaos. And yet, as Shelley indicates in the concluding paragraphs of his defense poetry, This can be the most important of all. And you find that in the composition of poetry, in the composition of music, that it is precisely this aspect, of this, this aspect of resonation, resonance, which is the essential communication. And we do it best in classical musical performance. Der Nikolaus von Kuhs hat davon gesprochen, dass Konkordanz im Makrokosmos nur möglich ist, wenn sich alle Mikrokosmen entwickeln. In Bezug auf die Völkergemeinschaft bedeutet das, dass jedes Volk, jede Nation ihr maximales Potenzial entwickeln soll und dass es das Interesse aller anderen ist, dieser Nation dabei zu helfen und umgekehrt. Und wenn das weltweit in der Universalgeschichte so geschieht, dann denke ich, haben wir die Voraussetzungen, um daraus dann aus dem Studium des Höchsten, was die Menschheit bisher produziert hat, wirklich eine neue kulturelle Renaissance für die ganze Menschheit zu initiieren.